College Wrestling. Tonight, from Carver Hawkeye Arena in Iowa City, Iowa, it's a showdown between the third-ranked Michigan Wolverines and the second-ranked Iowa Hawkeyes. Welcome, everyone. I'm Tim Johnson, and we welcome you to a big weekend doubleheader of college wrestling. Tonight, it's Iowa-Michigan. Tomorrow, it's Nebraska-Iowa State and Cale Sanderson's last home dual meet. I'm pleased to welcome my broadcast partner, former Hawkeye coach Dan Gable. Well, Dan, Michigan-Iowa, what a rivalry. 22 wins for Iowa, 21 wins for Michigan, one tie, and Michigan closing the gap with two straight wins. Well, Michigan was the first loss that I had in the Big Ten a long time ago. There was only a couple of them, and they got two losses to Iowa in a row. I should say they beat Iowa two times in a row, so it's going to be a big match tonight. Well, they're led by Joe McFarlane, a four-time All-American as a wrestler for the Wolverines, and now doing a great job in his third year as a head coach. Well, he's got a lot of incentive to beat the Hawkeyes. You know, he lost in the national finals to Barry Davis, and he did a great job. He's second in the world in Budapest in 86, and he's brought this team up to national rankings and very high well one of his leaders is at 174 pounds and he's in his sixth year in the program Otto Olson well that's unusual but he got that extra year because he had an injury that probably sustained more than one year in a row but Otto Olson has been in the national finals he's a goer and that's gonna be uh, you know a big mass that they're favored in well at 184 coach McFarland thinks so much of Andy Rovat that he made him the captain this year well, Andy Rovat and Jasmine Smith go back a long time. I believe they wrestled probably as little kids, and they've continued to wrestle as college kids. So it's back and forth, but uh, Michigan owns a, a win in the last event. Well, let's talk about the Iowa Hawkeye program. Coach Jim Zaleski has to be pretty pleased with the progress made this year. Well, you know, maybe you think so, but I've heard different. I've seen different. Uh, yeah, he's moved from six to number two, and that's progress. But this team here, the Michigan Wolverines, is the one that kind of set him back. Well, one of the leaders on the team is senior Mike Zadick at 149. He's chasing that elusive national title. Well, I tell you, he had a few bad words at him last week with Coach Zaleski. He kind of told him that uh, you better show up in weigh-ins on time because you don't have any time to make weight. You just there, you miss it, you're done. So right now, they're looking at Zadik. The crowd's looking at him. The coaches are looking at him. They need to do a good job. Well, we're starting off with a bang tonight because we're going to start at heavyweight with the number one ranked freshman, Steve Mako. Well, I tell you, I just saw him warming up over there, and they call him the bear, but I think he looks more like a bull. I tell you, he looked mean, he was snorting, and he was kind of, his feet were going, and I'm telling you, if he saw a red flag somewhere, it would have been, I think it would have been dangerous. Well, we also have joining us tonight, former Iowa State coach Jim Gibbons. Thank, thank you, Tim. Uh, we feature the number one ranked wrestlers, but there's also 12 other guys that are ranked in the top 10. Now, most of these guys are in that 5 to 10 category, and to be an All-American in this year's NCAA tournament, you have to place in the top eight, so there's a lot of guys that go either way. With the Big Ten tournament three weeks away, with the NCAA tournament five weeks away, both coaches are looking for consistency, and what that means is having their athletes go out there and dictate their style. With a crowd of 10,000, we'll see who gets the job done tonight after this. Funding for this program was provided by Friends of Iowa Public Television. By Allied Insurance, a member of Nationwide Insurance, proud to be a supporter of Iowa's outstanding college athletes. And by Quality Mat Company of Waterloo, Iowa. Wrestling mat manufacturers, reconditioners worldwide, featuring the high-density Quality 2000 wrestling mat. Special thanks to Amateur Wrestling News, one of America's most respected wrestling publications, covering the sport from kids through Olympians for over 45 years. Okay, the matchups tonight. We're starting at heavyweight with Brink versus Mako, A.J. Grant, ranked number eight at 25, going against Luke Eustace, Dowd versus Moore. At 141, it'll be Newton, the replacement, versus Jurgens or Moffat, and uh, Kulsicki against Zadik at 149. Uh, Bertine and Anderson, Martelli versus either Connell or Delgado, Olsen versus Nix, Rovat versus Smith, and finishing up with Smith versus Clark at 97. You're looking at uh, Bill Rhodes from New Hampton, Iowa, uh, a regular on uh, Iowa Public Television over the years. 
He's our referee tonight. I'm Tim Johnson along with Dan Gable, Jim Gibbons, uh, bringing you this big duel meet between the number two and three ranked teams in the nation, Michigan and Iowa. There's Steve Mako. There's your look, Dan. Wow. I tell you, he looks tough. I, um, and he's been kind of slowing down lately. I um, think that the Hawkeyes need to uh, turn him loose because he's definitely um, mean looking and he's uh, got a lot of tools, just needs to use them. Well, here we go. First match of the night, we're starting at heavyweight between Brink and Mako. We're at Carver Hawkeye Arena, Michigan, Iowa. They're already getting into a little bit of a uh, flat match there a little bit though. Center it. Look at this. Let's go. Wow. Man. That's what the Hawks like to see right there, a little aggressiveness. And you know, this is probably a pretty good place to start from that point of view, but yet we're going against an All-American from Michigan, Brink. Brink uh, out of Muskegon, Michigan. Um, he was uh, an All-American last year. Um, Breaking an offense! Twice in a row. He's a two-time All-American. And Mako, of course, Mako, the freshman, highly touted out of uh, New Jersey and uh, Blair Academy. High school last year when uh, Brink was winning his uh, All-American status. Steve Mako was in high school. Let's go now. Well, I'll tell you, you know, he's got him Run on the edge, you know. Fans. Way out here. That's two times. So, you know, it's it's one of those things that uh, a lot of times referees determine hand fight matches sometimes. And mat position sometimes turn makes a big difference. And so far, it's been mission going out of bounds twice. And actually, there's, there's a real nice wow. leg sweep, patent leg sweep. The reason why it worked so well is because he was on his head. He wasn't like going out after it. He moved him, he maneuvered him around, and did a good job of uh, setting up that leg sweep. It wasn't one of those leg sweeps where you kind of put your leg out and somebody's going to grab it. He hit the move and knocked him down in one, one position. So that was an excellent uh, technique. Two points there for that uh, takedown. Oh, one point for Brink. Two to one in favor of Mako. Two to one. Was it intentional reach? I missed it. He let him go to escape. He got up and then he just, he didn't do much to uh, keep him down. And so, and, and I was thinking, you know, if it was that easy to take him down, Dan, shouldn't Mako go after him like this? Because I haven't seen anything done by Brink yet from Michigan. Well, it seems to me like, uh, you know, he felt comfortable with what happened and he wants to go back to what scored the points. But yet, at the same time, you know, I don't know what he, what he felt like on top. I just, uh, I missed kind of that action there. So, you know, whether he, um, there, well, I don't think Iowa could have started this meet in any better situation with having a raging bull go out there the way Mako is right now. He's just, I've even seen him do something that he hasn't really done a lot of. He actually went for that sweeping single leg to that tape knee. Right, I, I, I think he's just, uh, you know, he needs some confidence a little bit and he realizes that he, he lets people in matches by not doing much. You know, and here he is, that's four times out of bounds. So the referee, you know, the, the home crowd here is gonna be a big advantage uh, for those type of situations, those calls. He's already had a warning but he isn't doing a great job of um, uh, staying off the edge. Brink. And you mentioned that foot sweep he had there. He just you, Once he had the leg up in the air off the sweep, he just really just shucked the head by it, and that's really what forced uh, Michigan and uh, Brink to go ahead and fall down. 20 seconds left in the first period. Mako ahead 2-1 to one after an early takedown, then an escape by Brink that makes the score 2-1. to one. We're coming to the end of the first period. Michael's making some half attempts there, and uh, that's what's getting him the call besides Matt position as well. End of the first period, score two to one. Choice. Brink gets the choice. The choice. He chooses Brink's down. down. Let's wipe the blood off of him. 20 seconds of riding that's time. Uh, Michael would probably be worth his time to see if he can build up a little riding time here. That's one thing you see out of Mako that uh, I think impresses me with most incoming freshman heavyweights and anyway, he rides so well. He's got to have a tremendous amount of strength in his hands, Dan. Well, he definitely uh, can ride. It's just a matter of uh, sometimes the coaches don't want him to. Sometimes he does it too much. He's he just uh, he's got good position there. He needs to uh, learn a, probably a tilt off there. But, uh, you know, that riding's uh, okay, but if you stay parallel, the referees are going to hit you and they don't really understand how to make that call. It's a tough call to make. But in those matches in the NCAA tournament, the Big Ten tournament, being able to ride a guy is still pretty important. I agree totally, especially if it comes down to that flipping and you lose the flip in the uh, second overtime. Well, 20 seconds of riding time, building it up closer to that minute, 15 seconds away. The guy's got his head down. You know, that's one of the oldest mistakes to make. You've got to get your head up. You want to see the top of the head. There. Again, Mako, though, is staying fairly parallel. But, you know, they're... So I think the referee's making the right call there, but, he, you know, the, again, Matt position. 
Top man, wow. Well, and with that though, at least in this, Mako seems like he's very smart because he really had that opportunity to go 50 seconds like that too, um, having the other man being called. And right. So well, he, he got done what you thought was important to get well, he's done. He's got a minute 12. He probably needs a minute 24, a minute 25. But uh, but uh, he's got to be careful here because if a guy stands up and you don't immediately take him down, it's a call that the referees again don't understand that much, and he didn't have to worry about it. Yeah. Well, how many times you see that though? The top man gets called for stall and they start again, and they're right they're right up, and maybe the uh, Mako didn't really give it as good of effort that time. So in that situation, it almost the referee dictated that uh, that approach. Score is two to two now. Escape by Brink. Referee should stop this. The head the headgear is uh, off. He doesn't see it. There he is. Yeah. Bill Rhodes uh, telling uh, Brink from Michigan to get his headgear snapped on. Here we go. See, this is where the coaches for the Hawkeyes with with Mako. He's got to like learn how to be able to take advantage of this situation to where he has to go to. Uh, if, if somebody comes to him, he's probably all right, but right now he's got to get in there. He's got to maneuver things around to where he can do some things that he's capable of doing. Uh, the, other, the other teams are learning how to wrestle him to keep it close, and that's where a situation, uh, you know, anything can happen. Well, both coaches are on the referee about stalling. It's, uh, it's almost comical. They, they both feel that they have the, uh, the right to have the, their, the opposing wrestler be called. Well... One well, and, and Bill Rhodes accommodated I, 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 Yeah, I don't really, I see, I think the referee over here was close, uh, closer to the Michigan guys, and I really think that makes a difference. But the, pot, the thing is, the mat position is very, very important here, and that mat position belongs to Iowa. There's the end of the second period. The score is 3-3 three to three with those two one-point uh, for stalling uh, going up on the board. And now Mako starts down. We're starting the third period. Well, those double stall calls, they don't really put the onus on anybody to get going either. It's, it's either one or the other. I think there was those first two stall calls I think were appropriate. They didn't affect the match and neither did that du double stall call either. There's uh, Mako out and keeps his riding time. There's a minute six, so he does have riding time. He's up four to three on the scoreboard with a point for riding time and he gets around. Oh, wow. His hips came out. Unbelievable. He had a leg sweep into a high crotch, and then he let the legs get away. Instead of going in there, he pulled back. You must penetrate if you're going to stay up, oh, going to finish. I don't care if you're uh, Jim Gibbons, you know. Jim Gibbons wouldn't be able to pick his button went out. Yeah, that's and right. And you pick him up, in the, up into the ceiling. That's but where right. was your hips? Where was your hips, Jim? You got to put, you got to bend your knees, okay? His knees straightened out, and his butt went out, and he wasn't able to finish the technique. Score is four to three in favor of the Iowa heavyweight, Steve Mako. Well, you know, that's interesting because, in a way, Michigan hadn't got out of the circle this time. And so... Well, I think that close takedown made a, made a difference, so I'm not sure what's going on here, but it's it's a tough match to referee. It really is. Yeah, there's a lot of hand fighting. There's a, there's a first legitimate attempt by, by Michigan. Five and I think, I think he's going to, you know, try to make some... He's going to try to win here, which Mako should stay in there and uh, uh, continue to wrestle. Not worry about the win. Worry about more about scoring points here. The score is five to three. He'll get hit, and he'll go right back to the other way. Michigan's had two or three shots, and if he has another one right or two, they're gonna, they'll be calling Mako. Boy, Mako's doing a great job of presenting himself, though. He's, there's no way he's going to get a stall call against him. He's just staying right there in the center and taking everything Brink has. He's, he's, he's doing a slap. Uh, he should be actually penetrating a little bit more. There's 15 seconds. Now, he look, shouldn't have looked at the clock. That was a mistake. Right. Now, yeah. the referee is now knowing that he's looking at the clock, and that absolutely absolutely gives him a chance to uh, to do something here. And there's not much going on, and I was going to come away with, the, with that victory. But uh, six to three in favor of Mako with riding time. Six to three, a win. That makes the score 3-0 in favor of the Hawks. After the first match of the evening, the heavyweight match, Mako wins over Brink, 6-3. It's a good start for the Hawkeyes. Now we're heading into 125 pounds with Luke Eustace, the sophomore from Iowa, ranked number six.